night, the Democracy Now! team rushed down to Zuccotti Park to cover the police crackdown. It began just after 1 a.m. We were there until the early hours of the morning coming in to do this broadcast. We witnessed the arrests in the streets and made it into the square just as police were dismantling the tents, as well as sanitation workers, and hauling away protesters' belongings in dump trucks. This is our report. Uh, tell us your name if you want to, and, and then what happened. Uh, my name is Alex Hall, and um, I, I basically heard a tip from reporters. They were outside of the park about an hour before it happened, and um, we asked them, "Hey, what's going on?" And they said the cops are planning on, you know, clearing the whole park out. So, you know, an hour later, they um, they basically surrounded the park, at least at least 100 to 200 cops, and um, with the um, shields on that were across their faces, and um, they basically put up two. They put up huge beams of light into the park on every side. They had about three beams on every side of the park. It got super bright, and um, they came with a loudspeaker. It was a ton of them, at least 100 to 200. And they um, they lined up in front of the park, on all sides of the park, but they lined up in the front on um, Trinity Avenue. And they came with a loudspeaker. They said, listen, we're going to need you guys to clear the park. We're going to take out the tents and get the sanitation team in here, and you can come back to the park without your tents. You won't be able to have your tents in the park. And um, they basically started pushing people. They started tearing down tents. They started to break them down. And uh, without even checking if anybody was in the tents, but they started pushing everybody around. Every without checking if anybody was inside the tents, they started just breaking them down? They basically started pulling them and stepping on them, yeah. And um, everybody started to leave the park. And um, this is where we are, basically. Everybody kind of rushed out. They started pepper spraying people. I got, I had milk here. I actually was helping somebody get the, the spray out of their eyes. And um, this is where we are right now. Please clear the street and the sidewalk. Where are we supposed to go? Where do we go? There's a, there's a competition over here. So now we're still on the sidewalk and police are pushing these protesters back. They told us to get off the street, so people complied, and now we're being pushed further and further away from Zuccotti Park, from Liberty Plaza, where just moments ago, protesters were cleared. Hey, Hero, what's going on? We're sitting there, they're trying to block us, they're pushing us to the wall. I got pepper spray straight in the face. You see, I'm still, I'm still looking. They can't stop me. They can't stop us. This is a sign. He pepper sprayed me straight like that. You see this? You see this? Twice. Twice I'm pepper sprayed, and I'm still looking at you, part and clear. This is a piece of Sure and clear, I'm still staring at you. That's a sign that they can't stop us, that we all see what's really going on, and that they can't blind us. They can't pull water over our eyes. They can't put nothing in our eyes that's going to blind what's going on here. And the same goes for all the people who are out there. Where were you when the police first moved in? I was two blocks away. Two blocks away, didn't know what was going on, and then the, my, I got a phone call, where are you at? We're being raided. So I had to run to this, straight into this. And what do you tell people right now? What do I tell people? That this is ridiculous. Soon, soon, we're coming back. We're, we're not leaving. That's, get that straight right now. We're not going nowhere. A lot of us are going to be here overnight. A lot of us will be here for the rest of the week. A lot of us will be here until the new year comes. A lot of us will be here until we see a new day, and that will, that's, you can quote me on that. So tell me what happened. Uh, I was standing on the outside of the crowd. They started really beating up on this girl pretty badly with the riot shield, and while people tried to pull her out, they sprayed pepper spray, like, directly into this little clump of people. I was right on the side, but I'm okay. So what's going on now is a familiar scene. We're getting pushed farther and farther away from Zuccotti Park. At every block, police are saying the protesters who uh, have the choice to be arrested or move further and further away. Where do they move to? Where do they go? Let's go. Push this out. Push this out. Push this out. So this uh, commanding officer right here telling everyone to push people further away. Now it looks like everyone on the inside here is going to be uh, is going to be arrested. Look, somebody arrested right in front of me. So now we're back where we started off, a block from Zuccotti Park. When we got here, there were throng, throngs of demonstrators. 
protesting the uh, raiding of Zuccotti Park, Liberty Plaza. They were pushed further and further away. Activists that were on the sidewalk were told to keep moving down, and they were asking where she would go, and they were just told to move. And what we witnessed was a very forceful interaction with uh, police even refusing to tolerate activists staying on the sidewalk, obviously wanting to get people as far away from Zuccotti Park as possible. And so now we're seeing these trucks behind us pulling away. They've arrested many people. And so as we tried to come back here to this area, just a block from Zuccotti Park, we spoke to one of the activists that had been arrested. Hey, tell me what happened. Um, I was being pushed and shoved, and I had no way to move. And the lady firsthand singled me out and pinned me down and said to her, arrest her. Put, push me face down into the sidewalk, and now I'm arrested. Tell us what happened. Um, it's your typical breakup of any protest. Um, just a little bit peace, more peaceful done than a little bit others. I mean, uh, bottom line is during the day, um, the officers started up, ended up putting on their gear, kind of first inquiry that something might happen. Then all the vendors that were around shut up and closed like any other given day. Like they're closing up, but they all did it at once. Something was going on. Next thing you know, we're told to leave the park, Fly, uh, flyers are being handed out, telling us the reasons of which, why, and that the tent's going to go, grab our belongings, to vacate as quickly as possible. And then the blue horn started coming on, people started, uh, the announcement started coming, if you're going to go, go ahead and go. If you're going to stand and you're going you're gonna to hold our ground, they're going to be in the kitchen area. So they all in, are in a soft lock arm right now. How many are in there right now? Uh, I'm going to say there's roughly about, give or take, 250 protesters than how many police? Um, I'm going to say there's maybe three police officers at least for every, uh, for every protester. And tell us what you saw with the tents. We were hearing that police had announced they were coming in to clear the tents. Um, from my visual observations, from what I can tell, um, simply they would push in a little bit, sorry, they push in a little bit and they would start ripping tents out. The NYPD has no idea what they've done. This is this is the worst possible action they could have taken before the anniversary because this is either going to sway in different, this is definitely going to sway in different people. And that's what it boils down to. Everyone who was out there that saw this on TV and said it was no big deal and that we were just goofing around, do you think the NYPD would have destroyed our camp if we were just goofing around? If we weren't some sort of threat to them, we're, we are a health and safety risk. We have doctors and medics in there assessing the situation at all times. If there was any health or safety risk, we would have handled it. We, had our, we have our own fire department. We have our own security team. We have our own medic team, certified EMTs, doctors, and nurses ready to help. Sanitation crews cleaning the park 24-7. They never stop. We were never a health or safety risk, nor were we a fire hazard. Every tent, almost every tent had a fire extinguisher in them. So don't believe their lies. We're talking to George, who's locked down in the park right now. Can you tell us how many people are there? This is Amy from Democracy Now, by the way. So, and just say then, uh, tell us everything that is happening. We're recording what you're saying. Just one sec. Go ahead. My name is George Machado. Um, I'm in the park right now. I am in the kitchen right now. The cops have surrounded the kitchen. Okay, there's a lot of people around the kitchen. Um, other things going on. Uh, they cut down the street. The door So, ha what's happened with the tents? And have people locked arms? Yeah, people have locked arms around us in the kitchen. Um, uh, and then there's just like people behind people locked in, um, and people locked around and uh, uh, locked up on the and people behind the people locked up and sitting as well. All right, so now we're right in front of these uh, dump trucks that are uh, taking away protesters' belongings. They've dismantled the tents, and we've seen these lines of police just throwing away the, the uh, belongings of protesters. And now th this one right here in front of us is full to the brim. It's, full, it's uh, packed with protesters' belongings. What's going on? What's going on? The police are beating the people with billy clubs now. We're a chain link. The people are chain locked like this. The cops are beating them with billy clubs. They're beating them with sticks. They're coming in and they're jabbing them. 
slamming down them with poles and beating them with building blocks. They're, 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 they're hitting women, they're hitting children, they're hitting everyone. Talk about what you saw. Talk about, Talk about it. Yeah, it's police, it's police abuse. They're abusing the people in there right now. They're abusing their rights. They said, oh, you're subject to arrest, but are you subject to get your head smashed in? Are you subject to get killed? How far are they going to go? How we far are they going to take are you a medic? it? And they do everything we I have is in my tent. They, they started said beating they people. Up here. They put in garbage trucks. My property. They the city better reimburse me. I got I got receipts for my property. city better reimburse me. What did they take of yours? What did they take? They took everything me and my wife owned. Everything. My name's Matt. Matt, what's your last name? Baldwin. This is my wife, Liz. Where are you from? I'm from Boston. My wife's from Philly. We married and live here. Um, we had trouble getting uh, housing, so we decided to join this. We had a big and work. I couldn't get work, so we couldn't get housing. So, Amy, we're walking through this rubble here of this encampment. We're walking along the encampment. There are hundreds of riot police inside. There was a report of uh, pepper spray. People came out, said that um, some of the people were being beaten, and we're standing in the midst of the encampment rubble. And we're seeing no other journalists here. We're right in front of where police have surrounded the uh, remaining protesters. We're told there's about 200 to 300 inside. They've locked arms, refusing to leave. We can see them now. We're amongst the sanitation workers, and they're taking all of the uh, tents and other paraphernalia into their garbage trucks right now. Although they said that they could come and pick up their tents somewhere else later tomorrow, this doesn't look like this is going to be something that's picked up. Right here is a bookshelf, it looks like, in this rubble. You know, one of the permanent installations at Zuccotti Park has been the People's Free Library, and it has thousands of books. I don't know if this is one of the bookshelves that was the Free Library. Here's somebody's suitcase. So these are the belongings of people, and they've been told to come pick it up at a, uh, at a police site tomorrow. What's going to happen with all this stuff? Where are you taking this stuff? Guess to the top. Wait, say that again, say that again, say that again. Don't say nothing. You take it to the dump? So now here we are walking through, we've made it on to the plaza, and we're approaching this kitchen area, the center of the plaza, where the remaining protesters have locked arms and refusing to leave. Um, I just picked up a book. It's uh, Brave New World Revisited by Aldous Huxley. One of the proudest institutions in the park is the Free Library. It's not clear if this is what it's from. Okay. We wanted to try to talk to a few people that are still locked inside and see what they're saying. Sir, please. All right, you got it, please. Exit. Okay. All right, this way, this way, man. So where now we're walking in what used to be uh, the area where the tents were. You can see it's totally clear. There's nothing here anymore. It's all been dismantled. Police are still breaking things down and throwing them into trucks, into garbage bins. But this right here, just, you know, a few hours ago, this is where all these tents were. This is where people were sleeping for nearly two months. The, the two-month anniversary is this Thursday. And now it's all been reduced to rubble. It's uh, people's belongings on the ground. Here's someone's glove. Here's some food. Here's a little box that says, uh, it's a take on the Bank of America logo. It says, Bank of No Social Value. And uh, now it's all being taken away. We're on the corner of Zuccotti Park, surrounded by garbage trucks, uh, by police buses, by riot police, and by sanitation workers. They are clearing out this park. Word came out, oh, just around 1 o'clock this morning. People did not have much time. A number of people have handed us this piece of paper, which was the eviction notice, that says notice of requirement to remove property from Zuccotti Park. What it claims is that the people will be able to return in a few hours without tarps and without tents. Uh, but people are locked down right now. Uh, we are being told we have to go across the street. So here we are standing on the southwest corner of the park. As you can see, scores of sanitation workers are dumping the detritus of democracy into their garbage trucks. Um, when we asked what they're doing with them, they said they're bringing it to the dump. 
And yet in this eviction notice that was served, it says, on behalf of the owner of the property, Brookfield Properties in the city of New York. I wonder, by the way, if Brookfield Properties has a note, you know, the famous line, produce the note if you own this place that has to do with foreclosures. But at the end of this, it says, if you fail to immediately remove your property, we will do so and transport it to the Department of Sanitation parking garage at 650 West 57th Street, where you will be able to recover it as of noon today with proper identification. And yet, as we look across the street at the scores of sanitation workers who are dumping the property into garbage trucks, it is hard to believe that anyone will be able to recover their belongings. What we're seeing in front of us is democracy's debris. That report with Aaron Mate, Hani Massoud, Ryan Devereaux, Mike Burke, and John Gerberg. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. Um, the one thing I was able to pick up from the grounds of Zuccotti Park was a book that had not yet been thrown into the dump truck, Aldous Huxley's Brave New World Revisited. On the back, it says, when the novel Brave New World, now an established classic, first appeared in 1932, its shocking analysis of a scientific dictatorship seemed a projection into the remote future. It goes on to say, however, today the science of thought control has raced far beyond the totality Totalitarian dreams of Hitler and Stalin. Numerous methods for curtailing individual freedoms have been developed, and the pressures to adopt them are increasingly powerful. Here, in one of the most important, fascinating, and frightening books of his career, Aldous Huxley scrutinizes these and other threats to humanity and explains why we may find it virtually impossible to resist them. This book is a plea that humanity should educate itself for freedom before it is too late. Just reading the jacket off of Brave New World Revisited by Aldous Huxley that was strewn at Zuccotti Park, just missed by the sanitation workers dumping the property of the protesters. Our senior producer, Mike Burke, um, is here with us right now just to give us an update. And, Mike, as uh, we're talking, Mayor Bloomberg is having a news conference, and he says, just about 200 people have been arrested. Right. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg, he also uh, defended the raid last night. He said that the First Amendment protects speech, but it does not protect tents. And he also questioned the, uh, the court ruling that we heard from earlier today that is allowing protesters back into the park. Uh, as we speak, there are a number of, of flashpoints right now in Lower Manhattan. Uh, hundreds of protesters have been gathering in Foley Square for the past several hours. Uh, many of them marched to City Hall to protest outside of uh, Mayor Bloomberg's uh, press conference. At 9 a.m., there's a large rally at uh, 6th Avenue and Canal Street. And we've also received word that the park is now officially reopened. Uh, so hundreds of protesters are reconvening inside the park. So it's going to be a very interesting day in, in, in Lower Manhattan. And the significance of it being on this day, um, uh, about one in the morning, this surprise raid on the park, the significance of the big day that um, uh, people were preparing for. Right. Well, this was the uh, 59th day of Occupy Wall Street. Uh, Thursday, uh, November, November 17th, of course, marks the beginning of the third month of, of the protest movement. And there were mass actions uh, across New York and across the entire country uh, to, mark, to mark the anniversary. And the plans for that day now. Very interesting to see the woman, the medic, uh, who uh, said this means Thursday is going to be particularly big. Right. I mean, if you look at what happened, uh, you know, six weeks ago after the Brooklyn Bridge uh, protests, where the police arrested 700 people, the Occupy movement just grew, uh, so I think, significantly after, after that police crackdown. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if we saw this really as a turning point uh, for the movement. Well, of course, we will co continue to cover this. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report.